What's up, print hustlers? You asked and we're gonna answer. I got a list of some questions some people asked across social media. I'm gonna dive into each of them and answer them. I'm gonna call them out by name as well. So let's dive in. First off, we have the Coach Beard. I'm pretty sure that's my friend over from Red Letter Apparel. So what's up, buddy? Um, his question is, having a set fee line item for setups or rolling it into the cost of the shirt, which is better? That's a good question. Honestly, I think the, it's an opinion-based answer. You know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. I would say it probably makes the most sense just to give them a finished price out of the gate and not bog them down with fees. It really depends on locally how you're trying to quote and who you're trying to quote against. Uh, so I've seen both work. My shop, for example, I usually do add a couple fees in there, screen charges, things like that. I've seen a lot of shops move away from that and it does kind of make sense to have it all in one complete price. So it's really a preference. I would say the best thing to do is roll it all in that one price. However, if people are saying, oh, you're expensive, breaking it apart and saying, oh, it's this price to print, but then we have this plus this plus this may actually make the sale easier depending on who your audience is. So good question. Uh, next, the LVAC. Uh, where'd you get those snazzy glasses? You mean these crooked bad boys right here? Uh, these are from Warby Parker uh, and they're definitely crooked. So is my nose and face a little bit though. So I think it kind of compensates, uh, but yeah, Warby Parker. Uh, next we've got really Nick Wood. Oh, Nicky Wood, I love you, buddy. Uh, what's the weirdest thing Matt has printed on his career and how did he get it done? Uh, well, I think it was when I printed on you and you were really slippery, I had to catch you first. Um, no, but uh, honestly, the weirdest thing I've printed on, not that weird. I've done um, mud flaps for trucks. Uh, we had to use some solvent inks for that. Um, other than that, nothing really stands out as, as a, a weird print. A lot of interesting placements on garments, um, different kinds of like, uh, I've done some like lingerie printing where there's not a lot of printing space, uh, things like that, but nothing that out of this world crazy. Um, so kind of a boring answer, sorry, Nick. Uh, Jarrett Robinson, uh, palette glue or spray tack, which do y'all recommend? Palette glue, 100%. Um, I'm a big fan of the brand Tecmar, but there's lots of other brands that also make great, great palette adhesive. Uh, you can use a ketchup bottle, spray it on, spread it around. There's also even spraying uh, systems that work with it. Either way, it's better for the environment. It's less, less uh, throwaway waste for those cans, right? It's just a much better product. They make ones that work with polyester, cottons, all those things. They last longer. I'm a big fan of those. So I would say if you can get away from spray tack, don't use it. You're gonna have to use web tacks usually for any kind of fleece, things like that. So there's still a place for them in your shop, but if you can minimize the amount you're using and switch to a, a palette adhesive, much better system. It also keeps your press and everything else around you clean, right? Not using spray tack means it's not aerating, getting all over your press not going into your lungs. <laughs> uh, my buddy, uh, Corey at Floodway Print Co, he did this great thing where he actually built this little like box that sucks the air in and he's got a filter on it. And it shows how much of that dust and crap is in the air that's going into your lungs. So definitely best to, if you can, get rid of any sprayables uh, in your shop. Uh, we got a, a handful of questions from Facebook next. Let's go into those. Where should I buy used screen printing equipment? Uh, this is a really good question, and I, I can be biased toward a few folks that I personally trust, um, but the real answer here is there's a lot of good equipment even from individual sellers, like a shop that might be closing and selling their own piece of equipment. I would say the best thing to take into account is plan to have somebody you can hire to go look at it first, right? There's a handful of great people. You can reach out to me, Matt at Printava.com. I can give some recommendations that you can pay to have go look at the press inspect the press, make sure it's worth it. Yeah, that might mean you have to spend $1,000, $2,000 before you decide to buy a press, but you'd rather do that, make sure it's worth it, then buy it, get it, and find out it's trash, right? So if you can get it, get to look at it locally, take a look at it. If you know someone who knows press as well, have them look at it. Otherwise, I would recommend finding a tech that you trust to go actually take a look at it, unless it has a warranty. Some people have warranties where like they'll, they'll buy a bunch of them, they'll fix them, they'll give you a warranty. Those are much more trusted places, but individual sellers, make sure you go put your eyes in that press or have a reliable source to check on it for you. Have you used any sort of graphic design outsourcing service? I've used tons. Um, I definitely use Graphic Source a lot. Uh, Nick Wood, Lucas, Brent Gardner, all those guys over there, just fantastic folks. I love what they do. Uh, we've talked about them a couple times on Printavo. Uh, great, great service. Uh, I've also just gone on Upwork.com and found designers for different things, for uh, a MailChimp designer ad, uh, if it's any kind of UX, UI design. 
I've used Upwork and, and kind of found freelancers in lots of different places. There are things like uh, Fiverr and 99designs, things like those. I hate to say that, yeah, I have used those in the past. I don't really care for those because people are doing work usually for free and then the, the person who gets chosen ends up getting paid and that's not really fair to the rest of the designers. So um, they do work. Uh, I just personally choose to not use those and try to find somebody I do like. I've also recently bought a couple things off of uh, designers on Instagram. They'll post something, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great, it says first sale. You DM them, you Venmo them 100 bucks, and there you go, you got a great design. The last one I got was actually even print ready. The guy's great. So definitely look through social medias as well. I do like to try to find an artist I like and help support them. What's the worst shop mistake you've ever seen happen? I mean, unfortunately, injury, right? I've seen I've seen people ignore uh, on safety cords on presses and like go underneath it. I've seen presses actually index. I uh, saw a guy break his arm. So unfortunately, those are, are the biggest things I've seen is injury. Other than that, you of course see the, oh, I printed a thousand shirts with the wrong color. Oh, I printed a thousand shirts this. Uh, one of the shops I ran in, in the past, we had a 10,000 piece order, two locations going out to an event and somebody in the sales side put the wrong shipping information and it ended up going on to a train for transit. It wasn't gonna make the date. We ended up having to source 10,000 shirts, do a front and back print overnight and then next day air them to the event. Otherwise there would have been hell to pay, unfortunately. That was definitely a rough one, but those things are, are nothing compared to the injury, right? So uh, always be safe around your press, please everybody. Uh, is there anything cool coming to Printavo? No, I'm already here. I'm just kidding. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff coming out. We've got a lot of them groups that's dropping any minute now. Um, and then the team's doing a lot of top secret stuff. I don't know what I can totally drop on here, but there's a lot of fun stuff coming out. There's some uh, mock-up tools that are gonna be in the works, uh, as well as the power scheduler, which I've been lucky enough to kind of have a hand in like discussing with the engineers and kind of frameworking out. That is going to be a whole new world for Portavo folks to be able to actually schedule out printing, folding, embroidery, ink needs, all that stuff. So that's a big one. At Shirt Agency, what percentage of profit should you maintain for a print only order and an order where you provide the apparel? Um, great question. So I do this in my own shop too. Honestly, if you provide the garments, cool. It's going to cost slightly more for that, imp that imprint than if I provided the garments. So for me, the way I look at it is every job I have to maintain X percent margin, right? So however I'm getting that margin, be it I'm making a markup on the goods or I'm charging more for the decoration. Now, what that margin needs to be really depends on what you're trying to achieve, right? What's your growth plan look like? So if you're, if you're like, oh, I wanna get out of this place and move to a much larger facility, hire much people, then you need to make a larger margin to afford all those things, right? So it really depends on, on what you're trying to cover from there. Um, good rule of thumb is at the lowest should be like 35 to 45% uh, profit margin if you can, right? Um, if you can get higher than that, great. If you're below 30%, you're gonna probably be struggling or at least you're in a, a, a nice co-spot. You're not trying to grow, but you're fine with where you're at. There's not gonna be much for uh, raises, things like that to happen. So the higher margin, of course, the more growth opportunity you have, but it also depends on what you're trying to achieve with your business currently. We've got uh, Hunter's Custom Embroidery. What are some, some, some big shop tendencies you can implement as a small shop and make it easier to scale? Absolutely, this is a great question. Processes, even if there's just myself and Mike here at Sound and Fury, uh, we're annoying with processes, right? Like we have to do it like this, you name your files like this, it goes to this department. Even though it's usually Mike running around doing all departments, it's still a departmental job, right? So build processes around what it's going to look like when you do have more people. If you are hiring and then having to go, oh, well, I just knew how to do it. Now I have to train you. Oh, and now you're making mistakes left and right. Okay, now I have to actually build redundancies and more training. Make those things happen now, right? While you're growing, before you're growing, put good processes in, repeatable processes, all that kind of fun stuff, just to make sure that as you scale, you're able to put people in, train them, and build more redundancy. You have to change as well. You're gonna find out like, oh, I thought I had it right. I have to adjust it. but. Plan now for those things. Also, shameless plug for Printavo here, but I would say go to premium before you need premium, right? I'm a small manual shop. We don't necessarily need premium, but we have it, right? Because the text message capability 
is great. It makes us look larger than we are, right? The ability to use the API for some custom software that we have, as well as things like Zapier.com, where we can have Google reviews being automated, all those things save us time, save us money, and also give us the appearance of being larger than we are, which is good. We don't necessarily have people go, oh, you're too small. Uh, I think I want somebody bigger. They don't need to know how big we are. Usually we don't have pickups. We have a lot of drop-offs and shipping. So they might not know that we're only a 1,200 square foot shop. We give the appearance of being a much larger operation by using some of those things that are in Printavo. And then we've got, uh, we've got a couple that dove into asking questions about actual separations. So I'm not going to dive into that right now. However, it does bring up a good point. We're gonna to put together some videos on how to do some separations. There's some great ones that are already out there. I do recommend hitting YouTube and just looking up for channel separations or color separations. Um, the big thing to know here is, are you separating an Illustrator or Photoshop, right? If it's very illustration, graphical element, and you can vectorize it and you can do overlays in, in, in Illustrator, great. You're just gonna go ahead and make them spot colors, print them out, separations host-based, you're good to go. Now in Photoshop, it's gonna work a little bit differently. I recommend if you're working in Photoshop, keep it in RGB, it's got a wider color gamut, keep it in RGB and do your channel separations from there. Make sure that you then make each channel a spot channel. That way you can actually print out from there or you can save it and export it as a DCS2 and you can then place that into an Illustrator artboard. Either way works. But for now, I'd recommend heading over to YouTube and just looking up any screen printing channel separations. There's lots of videos. A lot of them may be a little bit older on older versions of uh, Photoshop, but most of that data there is still applicable. So uh, start there and then stay tuned. We will have more to come. So that's it for this Q&A. Thank you all so much for submitting some great questions. We'll do this pretty frequently. So if you have more questions, feel free to drop them here or stay tuned. We'll have some more posts for you to add those questions later on. Thanks so much. See you soon.